Good morning, everyone. That was weak. Good morning. Oh, thank you. It was better. We welcome all of you who are watching on some device or another. Welcome to the service of the Union Center Methodist Church. And for you who have come in person, welcome to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that you promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are here. And we feel your presence. Pray that we'd be worthy of your presence. And now be with us in everything that is done, that it would be done to your honor and glory. In Christ's name, amen. I worship you, almighty God, there is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace, that is what I long to do. I give I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of the Lord. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of God's name. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of God's might. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of God's word. Amen.
congregation said, yeah. Now, if you'll join me in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading today is from the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 14 through 17. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and that your people, unless you go with us? What else will you distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 7, verses 44 through 46. Our ancestors had the tabernacle of the covenant law with them in the wilderness. It had been made as God directed Moses, according to the pattern he had seen. After receiving the tabernacle, our ancestors under Joshua brought it with them when they took the land from the nations God drove out before them. It remained in the land until the time of David, who enjoyed God's favor and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. Amen. Now we could appreciate some special music from Eric.
Thank you, Grant and Eric. Now at the time that I look forward to every week is our joys and concerns. Anybody want to lead us off? Um, I just wanted to say my granddaughter, Stephanie, she did come home. Um, now she's having hip problems. They think it might be vascular. So she has to go um, and have it processed on and then see a vascular person. And she has to go to Syracuse to see a hematologist for these blood clots. So it's just ongoing. Please keep praying for her. I was directed by my boss to say something about the Tall Festival yesterday. Pastor. Uh, you know, every year when we're setting up the tent and taking all the tables over, I keep asking myself, why? Why are we doing this? And if you were there yesterday and saw all those little kids with the cotton candy and the hot dogs and their face painted, running around having a great time, you know, that answers the question why. And, I, you know, it was just, we've had two great weekends in a row. Uh, Weather-wise, you can't beat it. And last night I was thinking about uh, what went on, and I thought of Proverbs 19.17. And it says, whoever is generous to others lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deeds. Amen. Probably a lot of you have heard about my grandson, and uh, he was he was arrested. He uh, took my brother's car keys and drove off. He was very concerned and very hurt because one of his best friends passed away. And of course, Christians had problems for many years with uh, ADHD and uh, PTSD from you know his mother passing away and his father never being in his life. And so he took the keys. My brother usually kept them in the safe because he knew that Christian was a problem in that way. But the keys were left on the nightstand. He took them. He drove off. He went to see his girlfriend. And then he was driving through an intersection. This guy ran right out in front of him, and he hit him going 40 or 45 miles an hour. And uh, he stopped. He slammed on his brakes and swerved to try and avoid him but couldn't. And then he pulled over, and he got out, and he he was screaming and yelling and crying, and he was yelling to the guy, are you okay? And, of course, he was either unconscious or, or had passed already. And so he panicked. My, he called my brother, and Wayne said, stay there, call 911. And he panicked, and he drove all the way home. The windshield was smashed. The hood was smashed. And he came in, and Wayne called 911 immediately, and he was arrested. So we, we have very little contact with him. I've seen him a couple of times. I've prayed with him. Wayne and I have both seen him. He's very scared because even though he's 21 years old, he has the mind of a child. He acts like a 13-year-old. He's very immature. And so we're hoping that uh, that God will have mercy on him. It's bad enough that knowing that you killed somebody, but on top of that, mm. having all these things that have happened to him all his life, mm. it's, been, it's been very difficult uh, for him and for the whole family. And... Uh, so I, I, I know you'll pray about that. The other thing is, on a good note, my, my son Eddie got married yesterday down in Pennsylvania near Thompson, PA, and uh, <laughs> married a very nice girl. She's a sweet girl, and uh, um, it, was a, it was a nice way. I was supposed to sing the wedding song, but uh, things were kind of crazy, and the, the sound system wasn't very good, and they were too far away from the when the when the minister was doing the service, he was too far away from all the seats were way back, and you could barely hear him. At least I could. Of course, it's probably my sixty nine year old hearing. I don't know, but <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was it was great. We had a good time, and so there's always like my mom always said, there's always a, a bright side right over the horizon. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, it seems to it seems to be the good things happen when it appears like things are the darkest. The Lord comes through. And lifts us up. And so praise him for that. Okay. Thank you. And a little bit. Oh, go ahead. 
Go ahead. Good humor, lady. You huh. got it. I don't know if this is good humor or not. Uh, my water pump is running every 18 minutes. Okay. And uh, uh, back in 2016, the thing wouldn't stop running. And ever since that sound, I hate it. Okay. And I can hear it clear across the house. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know if this is normal and I just didn't hear it before because I've got pretty acute hearing. But like I said, I don't think I got to sleep before about 4.30 in the morning. Every 18 minutes, this <laughs> pump came on, okay? Now, I did have some guy come over and look at it. He gonna try, was going to try to do something down where the pump was. But then he calls back and says he was advised by some other people that he better not do that. Where's the well? I said, I don't know where the well is. <laughs> the house was built in 1955. It's probably under the patio. And it's a slab of concrete. I don't know. That something can be done on the pump so I'm not sitting there up in the patio losing my sleep. Anybody from anyone here knows anything about plumbing? <laughs> Come on over. Show me the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yesterday, my wife and I were in Watkins Glen at a swimming and diving invitational. Our granddaughter was involved, and she finished fourth in diving out of 30, 32 people, so we're very... She did well. She's, she did very well. Yeah, very well. But the interesting thing was these girls did uh, 11 dives, a set of five, 15 minutes, a set of three, 15 minutes, just so they can repractice and not have to remember 11 dives all at the same time, so... They kept saying to this one girl, Mattingly, Mattingly, now it's your turn. And I'm thinking, Mattingly. I, I never heard that name like that. So <laughs> after the second break, my wife went to the ladies' room, and I snuck in next to this nice young lady, and I said, I hear you keep saying, good job, Mattingly. Is her name actually Mattingly, like the baseball player, Don Mattingly? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, I have three daughters. One is Mariano, one is Maris, and the youngest is Mattingly. So I'm guessing she's waiting for a boy to call him Mantle. <laughs> so anyway, we had a good time, and it was a good day out there. Like I say, she finished fourth, and she's very happy. So just a, a very good day all the way around. Well, I did hear a humorous story, if nobody else has got anything this week. There was a couple of pastors that uh, reconnected at a uh, convention for missionaries where they were trying to recruit, and a couple of old pastors got together in a little bit and started, each one had their own church, they were a senior pastor, and of course it comes around to attendance, and the one guy says, the only way I could ever get 100 people is if I used a pencil to get 100, and the other guy said, oh, well, I'm doing pretty good, we're getting between four and 500 every week. And the other guy goes, oh, my gosh, is that possible? Congratulations, he's speechless. So he goes home, and then he waits till the next Sunday, and he gets online, and he looks at this guy's bulletin to see maybe what he's doing that he could do for his congregation to make it grow. And he's looking down the bulletin, and it says, attendance, 87. Huh? That didn't make sense. So he's waiting for the evening, and he calls the guy, and he said, hey, I went went and looked at your bulletin today to see if I could pick up anything I could do in my church. And he said, and I saw that where the attendance is uh, 87, and I was sure you had told me that was, you were getting between four and 500 every week. And there was a short pause, and the other pastor says, well, 87 is between four and 500, isn't it? <laughs> so it just... Deceit. It was about deceit, how you can deceive somebody. <laughs> I just wanted to say yesterday was such a beautiful day, and I got to spend with friends and my family, too. Um, it was wonderful, but I wanted to mention about the kids. They were just great. 
and this little girl came over, Asian girl, and I had these what they call bobbleheads, like roll in your car or wherever you want to put them. Well, anyway, she wanted this little Christmas tree. So I said, you can have it. So the next thing I know, I see her run over to where her mom is when there's like five or six other kids. Well, she was telling them that she got it for free. So the next <laughs> thing I know, I've got six little girls running over. And I says, yes, you can all have one for free. <laughs> but it was wonderful. 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 I love children. I do have one more concern with my friend Jerry. I call him Jerry because that's his name. Uh, he's a, I'm telling you, this guy, he, got, he ended up in a hospital again. He went for an MRI and they found some spots in his blood or some different things. So he's in the hospital for three days with pneumonia. But he finally came out. But he has a clicking. This is the guy that is trying to learn to swallow that can't pass the test. And it looks like now he probably never will because they have to go back into his spine. He's got melanoma at the top of his spine, and the radiation has killed some of the bones. So something in there is clicking to the point where his wife is aggravated in the other room where she, every time he moves his head, it's click, click, right up through his ear. So he's going in tomorrow to, get, to, to figure out what they got to do. They have to go back in to his throat to see what's making the noise. They don't think it's the bolts and the braces that he has in there, but they, it's something not right. And they said, be prepared because you will probably be on a feeding tube for the rest of your life to go in and open it up. So he no longer can eat out of a blender or anything like that, but he's just, but, and all he wanted to talk about is his brother Dennis, whose immune system is dropped down because of multi-melanoma. And he's going in tomorrow for to have six hours of an infusion to build up his immune system. So there's some people that, that are, I don't know, they just, they have an outlook that, that's priceless. It's just priceless. So I asked for, for help with uh, Jerry and his wife, Kathy, who's trying now for her third time to get her hip replaced. She's trying to get around with a cane, but he can't get well long enough to have her get her hip done, so we're very, very blessed. We really are. So is there any other joys and concerns that we could uh, share? The lady in the back. I would just say I'm thinking about the, the phrase, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and that's your brother. Um, also, I'm looking at the altar area with the fall motif. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and, of course, the cross in the middle. But how beautiful that we can see colors. And um, it's just beautiful. So yep. thank you. Yep. Okay, I guess we can go to prayer now. We'll have a short, silent prayer. I'll speak for the congregation, and then we'll do the Lord's Prayer. If you'll bow your head and close your eyes and out of respect and humility and humbleness to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you look at the hearts of the people in the congregation. We are gathered here to enjoy this day that we celebrate as the Sabbath. We know it's the Lord's day. This is the day of his resurrection. We ask you to please look at our motives, our intentions, our thoughts, our attitude. May we be directed to be more like our Savior, Jesus. We all get a little bit off road once in a while, and we ask for a nudge or a, just a a little reassurance that we're all on the right path to come home. There's some people out there that really need some healing. You've heard names. You've heard situations. We ask that you take them under your arms, your everlasting arms, and embrace them. And please bring healing to those who need the healing. 
Thank you, God, for searching our hearts, for creating us, guiding us, caring for us, and loving us all these years. Thank you, God, for all that you do. Now we can pray the prayer that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the power of God. Oh, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to do a song. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, if you'll all stand if you're able. seated. Just a word about your pump, Patty. Do you or anybody else in the congregation know of a diviner? Because they can find water. I mean, I never believed in them, but they found water on my property. It was amazing. You know, they held out this stick and it just boom right down so if you can find one they'll find your pump for you or your water yeah well they'll tell you that they'll tell you that too all right let's pray heavenly father forgive me of my sin i thank you that you died for us and i pray that your words would be my words in Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if any of you noticed the name of the sermon, Finding Favor with God. But it has become my, I guess, pattern to present these uh, anecdotes, one-liners, jokes, if you want to call it that. Um, I, I use that term loosely. But uh, I knew I wasn't going to find any jokes on finding favor with God. And so I started to look for something that might be similar. So I was thinking about teachers' pets because they want to find favor with the teacher. 
but I couldn't find anything on teacher's pets either. The only thing I could find was something about their animals, and that's not what I wanted. But I knew that many of you, well, maybe one or two of you, would be really disappointed if we didn't have any. So here are some general anecdotes. You should not iron your four-leaf clover because you shouldn't press your luck. I like this one. My dad spent lots of time, money, and effort child-proofing his house, but the kids still got in. And why do dads put a pair of extra socks when they go golfing? Some of you should be able to figure this out. Very good. Okay. Bada boom. Reminds me, when we think about finding favor with God, with a poem that uh, Reinhold Niebuhr wrote, and it says, Lord, help me to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. As we find favor with God, we need to sort of use our minds and make good decisions. Now, there are many places uh, that reminded me of being a teacher's pet. And one of them was my fourth grade teacher, Miss Burke. I love Miss Burke. She had the greatest smelling perfume I've ever, well, except for Hannah's. Uh, and she had a unique way of turning a teacher's pet into finding favor with her. And she did that by keeping a list of what kids did for other kids, like giving them a compliment or helping them with their homework, positive things that one kid did for the other. And at the end of the day, whoever had the most points got to do something that was really great. Now, most of you are going to know what this is, but there's a couple of you who may not know. The prize for finding favor with Miss Burke was clapping the blackboard erasers. You remember that? Now, I didn't get to clap them very often, but I really liked doing it because you could be outside all by yourself. And for you that don't, aren't familiar with blackboard erasers, they would fill up with chalk dust. So you had to get rid of the chalk dust. But you got to go outside all by yourself. And I could melt this so that instead of taking five minutes, it would take 20 minutes that I'd be outside by myself. It was just great. Well, there are many examples in the Old Testament, two of which were mentioned this morning with the readings, Moses and David, who found favor and God was pleased with them. But I'd like to mention one this morning from the New Testament, and that is Mary. I want to read Luke, the first chapter, 26 verse and following. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel from Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. 
he would be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, can you imagine receiving that word as a young lady? I mean, she was confused. She didn't know what to do. But she remembered that she had a cousin who was also pregnant. Her name was Elizabeth. And so, in her confusion as to what is this going, what does this mean? How am I going to do this? What is going to happen? She went to Elizabeth for comfort and solace. Someone to listen to her and to understand. She probably figured Joseph wasn't going to be able to do this. I mean, he'd never been pregnant, so what did he know? And I'm sure he was confused too. Well, the, the blind pianist songwriter named Ken Needham wrote a song that I'd like you to listen to. It's just the audio, but it's called, I'll Go Tell Elizabeth. an angel maybe named Jesus it's not what I plan plans I have made are like birds nests blown down in the wind and the rain and scattered like straw and I can't quite tell where to find the sameness again sameness again Joseph, I have talked to Joseph, but Joseph's a man. So many things that a woman can know that a man never can. Do I hear an amen? Joseph is practical. Joseph is worried with things of his own. Big things, important things. And talking to Joseph is sometimes no better. I wish I could wake to discover this all was a dream. I ought to be shouting for joy, but I'm coming apart at the seams. Mostly I'm quiet, keep things inside me, that's how I get by. But there's too much to handle, and I need someone near me.
many things are happening to me that she'll understand. Cause now that she's pregnant, her life isn't going exactly as planned. Plans we both made are like birds' nests blown down in the wind and the rain. We're scattered like straw, and we can't quite tell where to find sameness again. Sameness again. I'm coming, Elizabeth. It's interesting that after she saw Elizabeth, she wrote a poem. It starts out, my soul doth magnify the Lord. So I guess she had understanding. When you think about her life and to watch her son die on a cross and then to be raised from the dead, she led an amazing life. And she was favored by God. Now, what can we do to find favor with God? Well, first of all, the most important thing is we need to be on Team Jesus. And that means that sometime in our life, we have to make a decision. We have to believe that Jesus did what he said he did. And what was in the scripture, that he died on the cross for our sins and that he rose again the third day and defeated death. That's team Jesus. And when we do that, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, then we find favor with God. And I hope that all of us have done that. But you could do it right now if you've never accepted Jesus. You can do it at home. Talk to one of us who have accepted Jesus. So that's the first thing is that we have to be on team Jesus. Second thing is we have to recognize that we have certain gifts that God has given us when we make that decision to follow Christ. And I grew up in a fundamentalist Baptist church, and they love this little phrase, heed the call. In other words, if you've been given a gift or a talent, then do it. Heed the call. And when you do that, you find favor in God's eyes. Now, there's two ways in finding favor with God. One is the obvious, to do a certain project or a task for God, a ministry. In, in the New Testament, there's about three different places where it mentions the gifts of the Holy Spirit that God gives to those who believe. And there's many things in there, the gift of helps, the gift of administration, the gift of preaching, teaching. And when you use one of those gifts and heed the call, you find favor with God. 
But there's another way we can find favor with God, and that has to do with our character or our behavior. And I'd just like to mention a couple. First of all, don't be anxious. Wow, it's easy to say, but hard to do. Don't be anxious. In the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, it says this. Do not be anxious about anything. <laughs> wow. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Second thing we can do to find favor with God as far as our behavior or our character is concerned is to think on good things. I mean, there are so many ways in the culture we live in to find negative thoughts and to listen to negative thoughts. YouTube. I love YouTube. But there's a lot of stuff on YouTube that people get really possessed with. And many of it is not positive. And even in our self-talk, that self-talk can become very, very negative. In this chapter, Philippians, it goes on after saying, don't be anxious, it says this. Okay, before we go there, we are. Finally, brothers and sisters, think on whatever is noble, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Wow. It's almost contrary to our culture, especially during this political season. And last, to find favor with God, we can witness. We come in contact with a lot of people during the week. How many times do we actually verbally say something? Now, I know there are other ways to witness. We certainly did it for the last couple of weeks as a church body. But somebody has to tell that person at some time, why not you or me? And we can do that. So to find favor with God is not only doing a project or a ministry, or a task, but it's also thinking about our character and our behavior and what we are all about. And that way, God finds favor in what we do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you care about us enough be concerned about we're do, what we're doing and to find favor with us. We thank you that you care about us. And we pray that we would be more vigilant in doing things that we know you will be pleased with, not what someone else will be pleased with, but what you will be pleased with. So help us with this. In Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand and sing our final hymn.
Christ's name go and God's blessing be with us during the week. And we thank you again for who you are in our lives. In Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.